Thank you very much, uh, Chairman, uh, for your introduction uh, to Irish uh, audiences here. It's uh, my uh, <coughs> pleasure to be here. I was uh, hosted by the uh, Korean Embassy to explain about uh, South Korea's policy toward North Korea or unification issues. Uh, so I prepared uh, it's a PowerPoint presentation, but it's got like you know, 27 slides, and so that's too long to cover all uh, slides here. So I, I thought about uh, this morning. So I'm going to have uh, about 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, certain uh, aspects of uh, Korean unification so that you can understand. But this is not going to be a completely official interpretation of South Korea's policy. As in some part, this is a reflection of uh, myself, my uh, research uh, during the last uh, 25 years since I joined uh, my institution. Actually, uh, I need to talk about uh, the foundation of uh, my institution. So Korea, institution, uh, Korea Institute of uh, National Unification was formed in 1991. Uh, it reflects the at the time, the Germany was unified in 1990, and Korean people thought about why not us. So it was uh, too late to establish a think tank to prepare for uh, Korean unification. But uh, the, during those times, we, uh, our institution was formed in 1991. We are completely, I mean, 100% fully funded by government. So uh, I joined uh, my institution after I studied in the United States in the 1980s, I explained during our lunch time. And I uh, had a vision to uh, uh, build uh, an institution like economic uh, European community in the Asia Pacific so that we can have permanent peace in the <coughs> Korean Peninsula. So I started my study in 1982, and I earned my PhD in 1989. During those times, it was Cold War era, and I thought, well, probably I can um, break this ice with the uh, formation of economic entity in the Asia Pacific. Uh, unfortunately, or because I lack uh, my uh, Predictive, uh, predictive uh, capability to see the future. In 1989, APEC, Asia Pacific Economic Community, was uh, initiated among the countries of capitalist countries. So uh, this is my limitation. So after I joined my uh, institute, institution, I tried to have some solution to Korean question. Uh, if I exaggerate uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, during the last 24 years, 25 years. But I regret that I didn't have capability to move our countries to close together, to unify, uh, even an inch. So this is my limitation. So uh, let me uh, begin uh, with... Uh, my slide. Uh, I will uh, briefly talk about the, uh, uh, this is about the governmental position. And then number two is my research. Number three is, uh, is my vision, or a group of uh, colleagues who is uh, sharing my ideas. But slowly. Okay. So, come here. <laughs> it responds slowly, sometimes fast. Okay. As everybody knows, South, uh, the Korean Peninsula was divided in 1945. At the time, China and Russia. And uh, now in 2015, still we are surrounded by four powers. 
during those uh, 70 years, we had achieved economic development and democratization. But what happened to North Korea? They are proud of having the third succession the, from the grandfather to a son and the grandson, maintaining an extreme uh, dictatorship. And the uh, unification in the environment is we launched six party talks in, the, in 2000, and we had a, a very important agreement among the six parties in 2005. But uh, North Koreans do not uh, keep the promises, and the six party is stolen. And North Korea has tested a nuclear a bomb three times already. And the thing is, uh, here, uh, <coughs> these relations among these four countries are also very complicated. They have different interests in the Korean Peninsula, except that maintaining status quo or maintaining peace or the, the unstable peace. I'll explain that and come back. And inside North Korea, Kim Jong-un inherited his power from his uh, father, Kim Jong-il, uh, three, four years ago. And then, but as you know, the North Korea has been reliant on the self-reliant economy, is having big trouble with this economy. It's, uh, also, society is uh, dismantled. And come back to uh, the policy environment for South Korea. Perhaps uh, many people th think that uh, South Korea's uh, people would like to have uh, Korean unification. But the problem is how we do not have consensus on how to achieve Korean unification. Everybody thinks Korean unification is desirable and is necessary. But on the question of how, we have a division between uh, the conservatives and the liberals, as you know. And about the will to pursue unification, this is another problem. Well, think about the time when the Korea was unified, which in 1945, the situation was Korea was colony of Japan, and we lived very poor. And then we are divided because South Korea, I mean the Korean Peninsula, was the colony of Japan. All those uh, generations who lived, who were born before 1945, when that population occupies majority of South Korean people, it was rather easy to pursue the Korean unification. Because for them, it, it's, uh, it's uh, almost like a no question. But for those people who have not experienced unified Korea, but if you look at the demography of South Korea, surprisingly, those people who were born before 1945, it says uh, it's only about less than 10%, is that the population, the percentage of the population is decreasing. But if you think of, uh, you have, you, those people are less than 10% of the population. So, for those people, the younger generation, they do not know what the unified Korea was. My generation, I, I, heard, I, was, I just heard from my father, talked about the unified Korea, how it looked. So uh, for the younger generation, they do not know exactly why. And so this is another problem for uh, South Korea. And uh, 
whether do we really have capability to change North Korean behavior so that we can unify? That's debatable. So this is why the South Korean president, current president Park geun -hye, came up with the idea saying that unification bonanza. So in 2013, when she came into the office, presidential office, well, she found out that uh, there's a widespread apathy toward uh, unification among Korean public. It's surprising. Because I'm, I'm running uh, the like regular survey towards Korean people. When you are asked whether it is, is it necessary to uh, pursue unification, almost everybody says yes. Then when you are asked how much money would you put into, put how, how much effort would you uh, make, then their, their answer is 100 thousand won, which is like a hundred dollars per year, which is very small money for the unification. So uh, uh, President Park, President Park suggested that this unification bonanza idea. So it was uh, quite a success. She drew attention from the Korean public and mass media, and also from the international community. So she uh, launched uh, the Unification Preparation Committee in 2014, and they are doing an, a research, extensive research on how to unify South, the South and North Korea. And I, I don't know whether we can actually have this kind of opportunity. Uh, another actual interaction and exchanges and cooperation during this uh, uh, Park Hane administration. This is for not certain. But uh, th there, the South Korea's uh, policy is about that. The fundamental difference between our previous administration's unification policy and uh, the current administration policy is our attitude towards uh, North Korea or towards uh, unification policy is more proactive. We are reactive because North Korean problem is a headache. So those uh, uh, previous administrations, they just reacted toward North Korea's behavior. But Park Geun-hye, uh, President Park Geun-hye decided to move forward. So, that's why he, uh, I mean, she uh, is emphasizing more uh, uh, international support for our effort for Korean unification. This is about the uh, last year's uh, unification preparation committee, her speech about. And then she made a speech at uh, Dresden in Germany. Uh, <coughs> Last year. This is so complicated stuff. The, the recent uh, speech in the anniversary of 70th anniversary of liberation. Oops. This is uh, important stuff. Well, this, uh, she, what she said was. We want to achieve another miracle, because uh, the South Korea's economic development, we call it the miracle of Han River. Another miracle on the Korean Peninsula, and also mentioned about 100th anniversary, probably we can realize. Many pundits say, well, we're going to have unification today, or <laughs> last year, 2015, and, and, but you know, that's kind of nonsense. It, it's going to take time. So South Korea's uh, basic policy is to lay a foundation for a peaceful unification. That's what the policy goal of South Korea, it's the current administration. You're not going to see the, well, it's, uh, it can happen tomorrow, but uh, that's not rational way of thinking.
So she mentioned about this uh, 100th anniversary. She wanted to see the actual unification in reality. Mentioned in the 70th anniversary, the address by the president. Okay, it's, it's, it's a very uh, rational, uh, or the, well, about 30 years we can achieve the uh, actual unification. The, this is about the, the today's title of unification. It's, it's, it's more of an idealistic kind of uh, structure or architecture for uh, unification. We need first nuclear free. We need to get rid of a nuclear bomb from North Korea. That's for the nuclear free peace. This is advocated by President Obama, as you know. And market economy peace. They should adopt market economy. So <clears throat> whole world runs under the principle of market economy. And as you know, the, the democratic peace, the theory. Those uh, regimes who have were run under the principle of democracy do not fight this democratic peace. And market economy, those uh, the less prone to go to war, those uh, capitalist countries. This is a foundation for our uh, new peace structure. And then uh, we can have uh, the tasks for unification preparation period and unification process period and no mistake period. I will explain this a little bit. Uh, previously, our uh, government or our research community did not break down specifically this uh, unification process. Because it's a complicated process, and also it's about the future. And it, it raises a lot of disputes or calls among the, the, the conservatives and uh, the, the, between conservatives and the liberals about how to achieve unification. So a group of scholars, uh, including myself, thought about how to do away with this uh, unnecessary debate. So this is a uh, kind of a uh, well, generalized model. If you were to unify certain country, one party to the other. So uh, focus more on the temporal dimension. This is where I call the, the put it more simply and sort of uh, help uh, your understanding. This is current or the, the time where we were divided. We started to make an effort to unify at the time when we are divided. You can say that way. Or you can, you can think of uh, the current. And th this is the time when the two parties decided to go for unification more seriously. So I call it uh, engagement. And this is definitely marriage, unification declaration. So you need, you need at least this kind of uh, uh, period, time period. Seriously, <coughs> two parties agreed to go for actual unification. That's necessary. Unless that kind of uh, measure is taken, it's impossible. I uh, researched uh, to almost all cases of unification, uh, <coughs> unification cases, Vietnam or the Yemenis and uh, Germany's and other uh, research, I mean, the, or other cases. We need this period. This is very critical. And then after the unification, we'll have uh, system integration. Here comes the, we, uh, we're gonna learn a lot from the integration effort made uh, during the, the process of uh, having integration, European integration from uh, EC to EU and so on. Then I see the, the whole process here is uh, uh, nation building. So that's why I called the subtitle a new career. 
I do not like to use the word reunification. Because I would say, like, you know, those people who are older than 70, 80 years old who lived under, like I said before, under the unified Korea, probably except, probably including those people, nobody inside South Korea want to go back to the situation where we were unified. We are very poor. We are a colony of Japan. We do not want to go back. We're going to have to move forward. So I do not want to use the reunification. So it's, it's going to be, it should be, a new unification. Well, this is about, so, so many people ask me about uh, how we can enter into that kind of a situation to actually pursue a unification. So this is a very uh, complicated uh, process, but <coughs> I don't have So all these uh, thoughts I shared with my uh, colleagues in, in, in Korea. We, uh, previously we had uh, this kind of simple idea about the unification. Because the division itself was made by international parties in 1945 against our will, because we had no power. So they, international parties, they decided our fate to become divided. So that South Korea had been one for a long time. So it is divided, we came two. So that's a wrong situation. So we have to correct the wrong. The fundamental approach should come from the politics, political areas. We should make a political deal with the other party. So this is, a, I call it, a one-dimensional approach. And the current administration came up with another idea, well, this is about politics. We have our own problem. South Korea has problems, as all the other capitalist countries have. South Korean population is aging. So demographic, demographic is very, you know, so we need another uh, economic uh, vitality to uh, revitalize our economy. So the current administration started to think about what's good, what kind of benefits we can get from the, the unification. So put more emphasis on economics. Basically, with the integration with uh, North Korea, we can have access uh, to the <coughs> Asian continent. We'll, we can have uh, land and wood and you know, other things. And also for some certain uh, job creation for the younger generation. Especially, the, as you know, the younger generation, they are more concerned about their job, as, as happened in the Europe. So that's a big problem for our country. So with unification, probably we can have another dynamic opportunity to provide us a breakthrough of our own problem. This is uh, the fundamental philosophy behind the current administration's policy for proactive forward for uh, uh, unification. And my thinking is still, this is two-dimensional approach. We need to create a new future so that we can have comprehensive solution to the politics, political relations, and economic relations, and also societal relations. We're going to suffer from uh, many things during the process of actual unification. Many people will suffer. So we need to provide certain answers, or at least we need to be prepared for that kind of thing. 
this is a call it a three dimensional approach and somebody call it a version 3.0 so this does not mean this one dimensional approach is not important it should be a foundation for the second third and this thinking is shared by older generations those people in the 60s and 70s and they primarily, I mean, they think you know, that the unification issue is primarily is a political issue. And this is shared, second dimensional approach is shared by my generation also. in the 40s and 50s. They are more practical to, to get another opportunity to revive our own economy. And this is for our next generation, those two, 20s and 30s, I'm trying to teach them to get the opportunity in the future. And, and uh, I uh, ran the, this uh, unification project, the research project during the last five years, uh, in the inviting uh, international parties uh, so that they can think about uh, Korean unification more seriously. So first the target was those uh, research communities in the four powers, uh, United States, China, and Japan, and Russia. And then I published in uh, 2013 uh, containing those thinking in, in reflecting their ideas. And then uh, last year I asked uh, G20 countries, except uh, minus uh, these four powers, uh, let's say like uh, Argentina and, and, and Brazil, uh, the, the, probably you think about uh, those, whether those countries have any relationship with uh, this Korean unification issues, but they did have actually good ideas. So I requested uh, this G20 countries uh, research community about what kind of things they can get from Korean unification, and what kind of roles they would play <coughs> during the process of uh, Korean unification. That, so that was uh, published in 2014 under the title of Global Expectation on Korean Unification. And then I uh, asked a research community who had gone through uh, the integration and unification uh, actually during the last, uh, after World War II, uh, especially like uh, South Africa, about reconciliation. They had a good history of making reconciliation. An Irish uh, scholar, and uh, Romania, and six, six seven uh, different countries, <coughs> research community. I asked them what kind of lessons we can get. It was published in English. And I asked them uh, what kind of things we should not do and we, what kind of things we should do is tenders and tenders. I think uh, I don't have it. Uh, Korea is a middle power. And uh, I'll uh, finish up with uh, just one uh, uh, short comment. I, I, I believe that we were divided because we were separated from the outside world in 1945. At the time, the South Korean, I mean the leadership of Korean Peninsula didn't know what the international community is. We didn't have power. South Korea's economic development itself reflects. It goes with the process of globalization. We owe very much because we adopted export-oriented economic growth strategy. North Korea, as you know, adopted import substitution policies, self-reliance economy, cut their ties with outside world. As South Korea maintains and expands our trade with our, all the world. So we owe very much from this globalization process. Put it differently, we owe very much to uh, the global society. It's not only South Korean people's effort to make our country <coughs> become G20 or currently in a prosper economy. Other countries helped us. It's an all interconnected economy. So it's time for us to 
pay back to the global society by implementing our unification policy. In that way, it will be welcomed by international community. Otherwise, <coughs> it will be it will not be easy to pursue the uh, policies here. Well, it's uh, because of a time limitation. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very complicated uh, <laughs> research, but I try to be uh, simple. Uh, but uh, if you have questions, then I'll answer to that uh, during my Q&A session. Thank you for your uh, listening.